Hey guys, um, I'm back and this would be uh, part uh, 8 for VIM Certified Engineer, you know, VMC training course and exam. Um, I'm going to touch base um, in part 7 actually when we were trying to uh, run a report and to open up in a, in a Visio that the um, um, the Veeam report uh, uh, viewer when we when we ran the uh, report viewer and we didn't have the uh, uh, Visio, so I ran it on a different computer and uh, actually ended up having a <laughs> this error uh, when it's trying to um, the Veeam report viewer when it's trying to open and insert its finding into a Visio and there is a built-in safety you know in in, in Microsoft product um, so basically it's saying hey um, you are attempting to save a file type Visio uh, template and stencils has been blocked by your file block setting in the trust center um, so I took a quick look actually um, see my computer um, yeah, basically the laptop I'm on it has a um, group policies um, it, you know which is controlled centrally so I do not have actually access to that part uh, so that's why actually I tried to run the Microsoft wizard and and you know I can make it work I, I'm pretty sure I can uh, it, it just I don't have uh, because the, the, the uh, and you know and funny thing is in group policies um, you can change local policies but the group policy supersedes um, so unless you detach it from the domain uh, and flush out the other uh, policies or you go and change the policies in the domain unfortunately I don't have um, access to that part uh, just for this particular laptop so so that's what I want to you know just to just to show you guys hey uh, that part was working it's not the issue with Veeam uh, Veeam's uh, uh, report viewer works fine uh, it just the uh, the Visio part is not working so I close that thing and a now we have gone through with um, you know um, the, the the download installation Veeam backup and replication console Veeam backup a uh, you know the uh, enterprise manager self services store Veeam one um, uh, Veeam One Reporter and Veeam One Business. So basically, we gone through like a, you know pretty quickly, and pretty quickly means still it's you know like it's a seven or eight videos. Um, now what we're gonna do it, we're gonna go and explore a uh, deeper um, the uh, the uh, Veeam backup and replications uh, product and its options. So. So before we get into a uh, deeper, uh, we want to cover one of the, uh, the very very important topic, um, which is um, necessary for exam perspective and when you want to implement um, uh, the Veeam software. We know how to log in and register and download trial version, but you know in a in a, in a real life then you have to purchase the software so when you're going to purchase the software it's like hey a what are the options so what i'm going to do it i'm going to go to straight to aveam.com and i'm going to actually um walk you guys through on on some of the options uh so right here um the licensing and the licensing is a you know a huge topic actually. It's the uh, the reason for existence. Uh, if the Veeam don't make money, they're going to be out of business. And if it's too expensive, we're not going to implement it. So so we have to find a compromise, right? So uh, right here you see it uh, on a um, the you know the best source of option. You know that when they say a uh, dialect from the horse's mouth. So this in, 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 in Veeam, you have to go straight to the Veeam.com. You can find a lot of other sources, but if you want real up-to-date information, 
for the best way is to go and check the Veeam.com and they have a um, what you call a help center uh, right here help uh, I can actually let's see if I can copy this thing right here so we know exactly um, show you what is the uh, so for example for this link the one is right here this link is a HTTPS helpcenter.veeam.com then DOC and then you have a sub you know the backup and vSphere and different kind of licensing but so basically the uh, the thing you need to remember is the helpcenter.veeam.com is the best uh, place to go and get the information. So, under um, a Veeam backup and application 9.5, we talking about the user guide for VMware uh, vSphere. Uh, so, right here, the type of licenses. So, type of licenses are basically, you know, three licenses. Uh, maybe there are four licenses. Uh, you know, we're not we're not talking about a uh, the trial license. But right here, the um, um, say the Veeam software offer the following type of paid licenses for Veeam backup and replication. So we have three paid licenses. So number one is perpetual license, which is a permanent full license. The per perpetual license term is normally 10 years from the date of license issue. The support and maintenance period included with the license is specified in month or years. Typically one year of basic support and maintenance is included with the perpetual license. So if you buy a perpetual license for, they say perpetual license forever, but forever in, in Veeam terms is 10 years, normally 10 years, you know, they might be, you know, uh, under some special cases different. Um, so when they use the term like, hey, normally, you know, uh, it's kind of questionable. So anyway, we give the benefit of doubt. We said, okay, 10 years for sure. And, a, and when you buy this thing, the, uh, the, uh, the support license and maintenance period is included. Normally it's included for like one year or 12 months. And after typically, like here says, typically, you know, uh, one year of basic support and maintenance is included with the perpetual license. So it's the, it's, it's the, it's the basic support. Um, so while we here, so let's talk about how many different kind of support available. So what I'm going to show you here another another page um, from Veeam.com uh, under uh, you know for per per perpetual license they're talking about a basic support. So according to the Veeam, as the latest information, uh, they say hey we offer two support programs, basic and production. That includes support services as well as upgrade and updates to our product. So when you get a, um, the uh, the support program, when Veeam changes, for example, from 9.0 to 9.5, uh, if you don't have the subscription, then you know, or your subscription expired, then you will not be entitled for you know um, the latest software, which goes like you know like uh, the other companies as well. For example. Excuse me. Uh, for example, for Microsoft, you have a software assurance. Um, Citrix has the same thing. VMware has the same thing. So let's see the basic support. Basic support provides software support service during business hours, along with the upgrade and updates to 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 the um, uh, to product. So they're talking about hey, hey, we give you basic support. Uh, with hey, uh, you know, uh, when you when uh, with I'm sorry, with the uh, the basic support, which will include your business hours. Normally, business hours are nine to five, and 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 for one year you can um, get the uh, uh, upgrades and updates. So let's say if you have production and you have an emergency, then the basic support will not cover. So production uh, support program provide 24 by 7 software support services and fastest response for critical issues. So here's the key point uh, for critical issues. So even though if you have a production support and if your issue is not critical, for example, you're having some kind of error message, which is not, um, they call it a severity one, 
or, or, or critical issues where your production is down. Um, for example, your production machine crashed and you're trying to uh, you know, use the uh, replica and it's not coming back up or you're trying to restore from the backup and you having some weird issues and you have to have that machine up and running right away. In that case, um, it, it becomes a, a, you know, a critical issue. Let's say if you have an exchange server and it's not working fine, I mean it's not working, then a, you, you, you're trying to restore it or you have a SQL server that's not working and you're trying to you know, uh, restore it to a you know, last good non-backup, for example, like an hour or, or, uh, earlier and it's not working. That is a critical issue. And if you, have a, if you don't have a production support, good luck. Um, uh, either you have to call your, your consultant or, you know, the Veeam uh, will not give you that support unless uh, maybe they can, uh, you can upgrade your basic support to production support right away. Uh, anyway, so that's not the point. The point is production support is a much faster response, uh, response time for, for critical issues. So, and of course, for um, what you call a, uh, you know, for every contract, there is a fine line. So the fine line means in this case is um, right here the support policy and a read beam support policy. So you have basically um, policies for um, the basic support as well as production support. So I guess for exam perspective right now, it's not you know, uh, the good idea to go deep but from knowledge perspective and you're working for a company or you're a consultant, then you need to know actually. And, and also, I just want to mention that if you are a Veeam certified engineer, for example, and a, you know, in good standing, then when you call support, you don't have to wait in a queue. Absolutely not. You dial the number, they give you an extension, you dial the, uh, extend that extension and you go straight. Uh, to a, um, you know, the uh, bypassing all the queue. Uh, right here, if you want to read uh, the uh, support policy, we can we can we can click on it uh, just to take a quick look at this one. So this is the policy for 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 you know for basic, and there are like seven pages. So um, and and this is a uh, but the exam exam question as well. Uh, they will ask you about a. Um, what kind of support uh, are available and what are the best way to contact them so, and before you contact them what is required actually you know it's not like you call them and they say hey oh we need that log and then you start collecting that log uh, would be faster if you know what they're going to ask you um, so right here hey uh, they're saying the same thing actually <laughs> go to beam.com and provide a wealth of information at your fingertip. Um, basically, um, please log into the customer center support portal and instead of calling them, go to your uh, support portal, manage your support cases, request one click update, and you know, attach logs to existing cases, obtain product, uh, download and patches, manage a license. In most cases, if you're having an issue, um, I know from you know from first-hand experience. Like if you call support, the first thing they're going to ask you, hey, did you apply all the patches? And funny thing is, even though the patches are relevant or not, or the upgrade is relevant or not, they will make you um, you know install those patches, is and they're going to keep their fingers crossed by updating the software. You might going to resolve your issue. Um, the uh, one thing is like uh, working for you know other companies. Uh, when you call in the first level support, uh, those poor people, they have to have a good reason uh, to a, uh, uh, escalate the case. So they have an escalation, es escalation procedure. They just cannot pick up the phone and dial the senior engineer, hey, there's a customer, he's yelling and he needs help. So there are a standard procedures. You have to follow the steps. So that's one of the reasons they say, hey, did you uh, update the, uh, the hot fixes or not? And the, uh, so that's, 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 that's the one part. They were saying, hey, go to the, uh, the communi community forums. And community forums are good when you have a newer product. And almost, you know, in, 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 in most cases, a, in some cases, not most, most cases, in some cases, uh, there are sometimes like 30% uh, uh, 
the uh, the support calls um, is because of the bugs in the new software. Uh, so that's why you go to the community forum. They are some diehard friends. What they do, they they start testing and they start reporting. Um, you know the new new software. So if you don't find, I mean, if it's not critical, so go to the community forums, and if not, then go to the support uh, portal, and you know, uh, open a case or upload the logs or or download the product, and then go to the knowledge base. And if all, if, you know what they say, all else fail, read the instruction. When nothing works, <laughs> then read the documentation, uh, because uh, probably you're gonna find your answer. And um, other other thing is the supported language, English, English, French, um, you know, about different um, uh, region. And I'm just going through. So um, all customer with maintenance agreement, in fact, regardless of their program, are entitled to contact support via f uh, web or phone, uh, 24 by 7 by 365, and open a case. Um, see, the, the, yeah, the, the bottom line is, yes, you can open a case, but uh, are you going to get a, uh, the, the proper support or not? That's going to depend upon your, your subscription as a basic or production. So here they're saying, hey, we offer two support programs, basic and production, uh, to your customer, and one program evaluation for 60 days if you are evaluating our product. So right here, see, uh, just by going to Veeam.com, uh, we just found out, hey, the basic production and a evaluation. So basically, there's three. So uh, you know, in a, a in exam or in a um, the uh, the online test or Veeam test, uh, um, they might ask you, hey, um, um, what type of uh, uh, you know, uh, support programs are available. Is it basic production evaluation, and they want to, you know, uh, put like uh, like two more, like critical or non-critical, and they're gonna say, hey, pick two or three, basically, right? And if you uh, don't pick the uh, the third one right here, depending upon you know what what um, uh, the options are, um, so you know, so basic production evaluation. So you gotta know which one to choose. Um, see, this is the production support, um, production support program provide 24 by 7, and then basic support, evaluation support is, you know, like a more deeper. Um, for services, the product update and evaluation support, nothing is available. Technical support is phone or web only. Um, the basic support, you can, you know, product products uh, updates are available and upgrades are available, phone or, or web. And production is the same thing. So basically, according to this support comparison, comparison matrix, um, the basic and production give you the same um, uh, option. And the business hours, um, business hours are customer local time. So wherever you're calling from, from 8 a.m. to uh, I, I'm just, I, I apologize, I said 9 to 5. So this one is 8 to 5, actually, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5. So if you are um, upgrading it uh, on the weekends, um, you better have a production support. Otherwise, uh, you're going you, you're gonna to stuck till Monday. Um, the rest. And also, yeah, this is this is actually pretty important to know from from exam perspective, and also from a uh, you know like a, a service um, perspective. Uh, if you have a severity one, severity one is a business critical software component, or a V managed system is inoperable or unavailable, uh, and the production system is down. So basically, they're gonna they, it, it it's like it's like um, uh, one hour. You know, you're gonna go and open the case, and they're gonna call you within one hour. And a uh, target basic response SLA is is two hours. And if you have a severity two, meaning production is not down, it's still up and running, but you know it's 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 still as serious, then it's three hours. And a business hours is eight business hours. So and the severity three non-production six hours, twelve business hours. Um, and severity four minor issues is eight hours. So probably you know um, they're gonna call you next day. <laughs> so see how how this just by going to Veeam.com 
and picking up the latest information, we are getting like a wealth of information and which gonna help you going forward and, and you know in your when you're supporting Veeam and especially passing the test because these are um, some of the questions like you know hey for severity one what is the uh, the uh, the typical response uh, is gonna say one hour um, six hours three hours eight hours and you have to know it so you have to pick the one um, let's see contacting customer support is a same thing a, a login case submitting a support case via web via phone actually you know funny thing is this is also a a, a, a exam question and a, a, a practice question they you know they will ask you hey uh, by the way uh, if you want to open a co uh, um, case uh, can you open a case via web or can you open a case via phone and and if you don't read this thing or if you don't have a hands-on experience or you didn't go through the class or you didn't pay attention then you're gonna say hey why are they asking for a we can open a case via web because almost every company prefer you to open a case via web because they don't want their uh, in the operator to be tied up and then they're going to say hey why a phone so i mean it's going to give you doubt so it's if if you don't read if you're not uh, you know um, um um up to up to speed and these are the following up yeah here's here's one more question uh which is very important like okay you open a case now is the follow up what will happen to follow up? How many times they're going to try to contact you? And at what point they're going to decide your, your issue is resolved? So what they say is like they're going to, they say they're going to try three attempts on separate business days. Um, you know, it used to be like, hey, we're going we're gonna to attempt three times. And if you don't respond, we're going to close your case. Uh, so what the support people were doing, not in uh, you know uh, Veeam, but in some other companies, they were waiting for like two hours and sending an email after two hours, and by the end of the day, they did not receive a response because you were on vacation or you didn't check your mail and your case was being closed. So that's why they say, hey, we're gonna send, we're gonna do a temp for three separate business days. Uh, you know, so chances are, you know, you're gonna you you you're gonna uh, uh, respond. Or you're gonna get their email, and um, and they're saying it, if unable to make contact with you, we may close the case without your consent. And the funny thing is, it says may. It's not gonna be may. They're gonna definitely close your case because the support uh, engineer, his efficiency or her efficiency depend on how many number of cases they close. Uh, why? Because uh, this is everywhere. Uh, how many how many calls you answer and how many cases you close. Um, if the issue continues to exist, you may open a new case and reference the old one. See, what they're saying is, we will not reopen your case. You can open a new case, and we will not open the same case, but you can open a, a new case and reference the old one. Um, now, uh, this one is like when they didn't get the response. They co uh, contacted three times. Now, here they're talking about uh, resolution. So software that provide a fix for the problem case closed. Hey, you have a problem? We give you a, a hot fix, issue resolved, case closed. Permanent business or system workaround, case closed. For example, uh, you 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 having an issue, and then uh, they give you a workaround. Hey, don't do this thing. Um, you know, instead of backing up, a, a, you know, for machine like continue backup. I'm just saying hypothetically, this might not be the case, but hey, uh, uh, the back it up after every five minutes, you know, it, it, it might not be the exact what I'm trying to say, but what I'm trying to say is if there is a, a business or system workaround, then, you know, your case close. Uh, temporary business or system workaround, case severity level is reduced, you know. It's, um, for example, if you have a, severe, a severity one case where your production machine went down and replica didn't come back up, so finally you you you, you spin off a new uh, machine um, from the uh, um, recovery point, so now your machine is up and running means like it's it's, it's not a severity one case. Uh, you're back in the business at least for now. Um, action plan for development uh, for a fix of workaround. And milestone and dependencies are set, communicated, and tracked. Case severity might be changed. 
So let's see you having a, you know, like a like a critical issue, a severity one issue, and because you know for for whatever reason you you updated it, you upgraded it, you you uh, have the uh, um, you applied the Windows update and Windows update did not work well with your Veeam backup software. So what will happen is the Veeam will give you a um, a hot fix, for example, you know, and they will test it. They will they will give you a hot fix. Believe me, by the time you have a problem, meaning a lot of other people have the problem. So they will give you one, and then they will reduce the severity. Hey, and then eventually they're gonna they're gonna close this case because hey, you have the workaround right now. We are working on it, and in a next release, we will update the software. So that's another thing. Um, is the customer specific uh, customization enhancement and is not covered under maintenance. So, for example, you say, hey, I need this option, by the way. I don't want to go and click three different places to get to where I need to go, or I need this, per this, this particular functionality, which is, let's say, mm, you wanted to retrieve somebody's uh, attachment in an email and you said hey I don't want to go mount the uh, the point and use the Veeam Explorer for exchange and and and, and download or you know uh, I need some simple option so sometimes you know it, it, it is good sometimes the feedback is very very good actually because a one of the top reason for 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 Veeam and also for Amazon, actually, I want to say Amazon because I'm an Amazon solution architect as well. So, so, so the, the 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 success, the Amazon is successful because they are listening to their customers. That's the reason they are having like a uh, almost 1,000 new enhancement to their product. Basically, every day you get up, you will see you will see three different enhancement to their uh, product or three different feature. So same thing, Veeam is listening, you know, and so when you ask for enhancement, eventually it's going to come, you know, in the in in next release. Um, so right here, the last one is, hey, um, if, if, if the scope of the Veeam support responsibility to provide installation, configuration, and upgrade or offer product walkthrough of installation, upgrade, and other document instructions are not supported. For example, you have a certain hardware uh, DDU uh, appliances are supported and you say, hey, I want to try this new type of um, uh, hardware appliance and that's not supported. So in that case, you're out of luck. Uh, Veeam support does not write a script on demand. Custom script troubleshooting is not supported. Meaning, uh, I mean, cannot <laughs> trouble. Custom script troubleshooting must uh, support it. Basically, you have a script and you're running that script. Um, the good example might be uh, PowerShell, by the way, because Veeam support PowerShell. And if you are running, uh, for example, you can do a backup, uh, you know, using the GUI, and then you start using the PowerShell uh, using your script. And after some time, uh, you keep modifying your script, and something happens and it's not working. But you can accomplish the same task you going through. Um, the, you know the console. So in that case, you know something can be done using the console. It's not being done using PowerShell, and the PowerShell is your script. Uh, I mean, you know, you're using your script to run the PowerShell. So in in, in those cases, hey, we are gonna say, hey, we don't support, and which is fine. Um, right here, feature request is all the standard customer satisfaction surveys. I know for sure the customer satisfaction survey is very, very, very important. From a um, from a uh, you know the company's perspective, so you be the judge for that. Okay, um, I think we went too far actually. <laughs> uh, the third-party support, which is like, and these are the uh, support numbers. Uh, I think we we really went too far. We don't need to go that far. So let's go back to our. We started from per perpetual license, and we went for you know like. Uh, different kind of uh, subscription, uh, standard or production. So let's go back to the perpetual license, and then we go to the subscription license. Um, full license that expire at the end of subscription term, you know. 
And not only, uh, you know, these, uh, if I'm not mistaken, these subscription licenses are from MSPs, like a managed service provider. Uh, they don't want to buy the product. They just want to, you know, you know, do per month. So um, when they install it, they keep a margin on the top of the uh, subscription and they pass it on to the customer because they are managing their environment. Uh, the sub subscription license is normally from one to three years from the date of the license issue. And this is the uh, um, um, pretty um, um, important thing to, um, to remember. Uh, the subscription license are from one to three years. So these are for 10 years, typically or normally. This is for 10 years and the rental license. So third one is rental license. So rental license is the full license with the license expiration date set according to um, according to the chosen rental program, normally one to two months from the date of license issue. The rental license can be automatically update upon expression. It's just like, you know, that little check mark when you go to a website, register your website, there's a check mark. It's going to say, hey, we're going to save, we're going to auto-renew it. Once you click on auto-renewal, then they will, if you pay by the credit card, they're going to start, you know, using that, your, your, your billing for, for renewal. So it's kind of same concept. Hey, they automatically update upon expression. Um, so, If we go a little bit, uh, you know, deeper into this one right here, now we have a, now we know there are three different type of licenses. Um, and now that we know there, um, the month, um, you know, like a, a, a licensing period. Um, and now they're talking about the grace period, by the way. Perpetual license, you don't have a grace period. Uh, subscription license, they give you 30 days. Rental license, they give you 60 days because they know in 60 days, you know, sometime it takes time for approval, um, especially for rental license. Uh, same thing for subscription license, you might, you know, expire, you didn't pay attention to it. So you have, uh, you know, uh, if you have like for three years and, you know, for subscription license and you're not going to renew it right after the next month, you know, some, um, especially if it's your client. Uh, same thing is for um, the rental license if you're MSP. And the key to remember actually is a, this is extremely important, uh, how these um, licenses are tied to the, uh, the hardware. So perpetual license is per socket per VM, meaning per socket um, on your, on your, on, on your, on your um, server. It's not per CPU uh, because originally, uh, you know, I thought it was it was uh, per CPU, and, a, and and I was wrong actually. So it's per socket because if you have two sockets, uh, you know, my understanding is maybe one socket is um, you know um, uh, have the processor. Um, so that's why Veeam sells per socket, uh, perpetual license. Subscription is per socket. So per socket or per VM is the perpetual license, right? Uh, so subscription is per socket and it's not per, per, per VM. And a, a rental license is per VM because they want to make money, right? <laughs> because when you have a, we have a rental license, probably is like, it's pretty small business. So in your small business, you have like one or two machines. Uh, so that's why uh, it's on. It's not. It's not by per socket. Um, okay. Uh, and 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 the per VM. Here's the important thing, actually, right here. Um, I was going to miss it, but I'm glad uh, you know we didn't miss this one. Um, is right here. It says important. How can we miss it if it says important, right? Uh, per uh, VM licenses are provided to VM cloud and service provider. Cloud and service providers only. For end user, VM offer per socket licenses. So even if you want to have a perpetual license and if you are a end user, you're out of luck. You're going to get per socket. See? Just this line changes the whole, um, um, what you call a, 
um, not the concept actually uh, how you can understand this thing so perpetual license became a if you are an end user or you a you are a service provider if you are a service provider you can go with either way if you are you are end user meaning you are a enterprise or a small business or medium business and you want to buy it directly then you have to go to per socket um, and subscription license it doesn't matter and the rental license is the same way um, So, in addition to the paid licenses, uh, they offer two type of free licenses. You know, <laughs> so basically, we instead of three licenses, now we have a um, five different type of licenses. Uh, three of them are paid licenses. The one we just uh, talked about it, and now we have a two type of free licenses. One is a trial license, the one I'm using it right now on on this machine. And the other one is is NFR and not for um, you know sale, <laughs> um, not for yeah not for sale not for resale NFR not for resale or not for commercial use. I mean if you know if I have a NFR uh, because we are entitled for NFR because we are the partner uh, and and also if you're the Veeam certified and you are. You know, entitled for some NFR license, uh, but you cannot sell it, you cannot reuse it somewhere else. So, this is important things to know. Um, if we go a little down on this one, I think that's the end. And by the number of CPU sockets on managed host, um, it's making things a little bit complicated, huh? You, you must obtain a license for every occupied motherboard socket as reported by the hypervisor API. So if the a, a hypervisor API says, hey, um, you have a, a CPU socket, then you have to buy a license. A license is required only for source host. See, this is the, another twist. <laughs> um, a host on which VM that you back up or replicate resides. The target host for replication and migration jobs do not need to be licensed. Basically, if you have a DR site for DR site you, and you're doing a replication, then you don't need to uh, need to have those um, um, uh, you know server license. And um, it's funny thing is, you know, this thing is at the end of the uh, the article <laughs> uh, because if the company buys it uh, for for licenses for DR, it's good, right? So, but it's you don't have to, um, you know. You know, this is the same thing when you go to a Walmart, you want to buy a milk. The milk is all the way in the back, you know. Why? Because a uh, if the milk is in the uh, in you know. Uh, in, in, close to the entrance, then people are going to come and buy the milk or eggs and they're going to pay and leave. So that's why they put those two or three items all the way in the back because you're going to walk through the other aisles and on your way to, the, you know, uh, you know the, uh, the, the milk aisle, you might want to buy some of those things. So that's why <laughs> they put this thing right here at the, at, the, uh, you know, at the end of the article, hey, uh, if you are planning for a DR site and then you you know you might buy it they say hey we need a, a license for for our production site and our DR site is good but you don't have to buy for DR site uh, I'm not saying it's mis misleading <laughs> I'm just saying it's, it's to me it's just a little bit funny um, let's go for a um, um, uh, by the number of protected machines, you must obtain a license for total number of VM that you plan to protect. Uh, backup, replicate, copy, uh, or for which you plan to create Veeam zip files. You know, we're going to talk about this Veeam, Veeam zip as well. Um, this is another important topic. You might see one or two questions on that one. Uh, VM process with backup, copy, and tape jobs are not regarded as protect, protected VMs. Okay. 
Uh, these type of jobs provide an additional production level for the VM and are already protected with the backup job. So what are they saying here? They are saying you have to purchase license by number of protected VMs. How many VMs you are protecting? Uh, you know, it's not um, it's not like if you are um, the VMs process with backup copy or tape job, so you already paid for it. Now what you're doing it, you are you you you're just doing a backup copy. It's not a backup. So you're doing a backup copy and tape jobs are not regarded as protected VMs. So these type of jobs provide an additional production level for the VMs because this is a you know kind of three to one uh, you know offsite or backup site um, uh, scenario. So that's why you don't have to um, um, pay for it. Um, VM backup and replication keep track of the number of protected VM. If the number of protected VM exceeds the number of licensed VM, VM replication display a warning when you open the product console. Um, you know, this is this is kind of um, a little bit, in, in, in my opinion, I might be wrong, but in my opinion, this thing is a little bit misleading. Uh, in, in addition to giving you a warning, your backup will not be successful. I have a first-hand experience where I, add, I I have a six CPU license for uh, for three hosts to each, and I added an additional host. So uh, some machines running, um, you know, stop being backed up. They say, hey, you ran out of license, you know, when you 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 added more machines. So um, there is there is more into it. Um, so guys, it's been 41 minutes, and we just talking about Veeam and backup licenses. Um, uh, actually, we're going to continue um, with this discussion right here um, because we didn't talk about a grace period license and a license termination, um, which is actually not that big. Uh, again, you can see, guys, this was updated on a November 23rd, 2016. So it's pretty, you know, uh, latest. And again, because we are getting the information straight from the horse's mouth. So nobody can challenge this information. Um, so what are they saying? A grace period and license, term, uh, license, license termination. To ensure a smooth license update and provide sufficient time to install a new license. Veeam backup and replication offer a grace period. The duration of grace period depends on the type of license. And we know we, we, we talked about five different types of licenses, three paid, two free. Uh, during the grace period, you can perform all. It says during the grace period. You know, even though your product, your, your license expired, now you're in a grace period, you can perform all type of data protection and disaster operation. Right? However, Veeam Backup and Replication will inform you about the license expression when you open the Veeam Backup and Replication console. So every time you click on it, is gonna is gonna you know the it's gonna remind you hey by the way you didn't pay for your license expired um, the license status in the license information window will appear as expired number of days grace period remaining so this is another thing hey that many number of days left so hurry up buy the license you must update your license before the end of the grace period. What will happen is your, your license expired, your grace period ended. If you do not update the license until the end of the grace period, the following measure will be taken. Right? So for trial and NFR licenses, Veeam Backup and Replication will switch to the free operational mode. And guys, again, this thing will come in the exam. Guaranteed. Okay? Um, and it's going to be kind of tricky. Uh, it's not going to be like that simple. Um, they're going to give you a different scenario, right? So again, for trial and NFR license, meaning a free license, Veeam Backup and Replication will switch to the free operational mode. It's going to continue to perform. So what will happen to a, a free operational mode? Free operational mode means a lot of 
uh, you know things in your in your in your uh, in a backup infrastructure will not work. Um, there are uh, features. Um, for example, um, give you an example: a Win Accelerator will 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 not work. Uh, your a, a Veeam Explorers will have a very limited functionalities because you know the thing is they say hey we, th these are the free tools. Uh, the Veeam Explorers are free, but they're, 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 it's, uh, the functionality is not 100% free. Um, okay, so full licenses, functionality available in the Enterprise and Enterprise Plus edition. Uh, Veeam Backup and Replication will not be available. And actually, uh, once we've done our next uh, video, going to be about a uh, you know the uh, what features are available between Enterprise, Enterprise Plus, or uh, you know the other um, edition uh, of Veeam and Backup will not be available. Veeam will not be uh, uh, processed by existing jobs, and jobs will fail with error status. However, you will be able to restore Veeam data from existing backups. So. Let's repeat this thing one more time because this is important. And uh, from not 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 only from exam perspective, is from a um, you know uh, op you know operation perspective. So if you, if if you're managing Veeam and your license is expiring, you know what will happen. Um, if you're replicating jobs or you 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 know you're replicating to a cloud or you're sending it to offsite, a lot of things will not work. Um, and also, like for example, when accelerators and you are you you sending jobs, uh, you know all their functionality will be lost. Um, but what they're saying is, even though you do not own the product anymore because your license expired, it doesn't mean uh, you can you can restore um, um, the the VM from the existing backup. You can do that because you paid for it to do a backup, so now you're entitled. To restore your data uh, in a ballpark. Um, so we went through with this thing, and a the third option is automatic logging. So <clears throat> you know, remember when we were in 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 the console, we were clicking on it, hey, auto update, and in a uh, in the trial one was failing because no ID was associated. So that's where you have a, a license auto updates. Um, Enable for rental for VM licensing. Um, so what are they saying when 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 license auto update is enabled for license for rental license per VM licensing, VM backup replication additionally perform automatic usage logging. So for rental, you know, just like a rental car, um, they 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 want to monitor like how much your you know mileage you are putting on. You know, in in addition to like what the number of days you you rent that car, so that exactly the same thing. They're gonna check for licenses, and they're gonna check for automatic user logging. Uh, as a part of logging, why they wanna do logging? By the way, Veeam backup and replication collect statistics on the current license usage and typically send a report to Veeam license update server. The report provides information about the maximum number of VMs that were managed by Veeam backup and replication over the past week. High watermark. The process runs in a background mode once a week at random time and day. They don't want to tell you like, hey, we're going to run at 8 o'clock at exact this time. So you go 8 o'clock and, you know, remove the uh, uh, internet connectivity. Um, I'm just kidding. but. Um, when you rent a license, you're you're beyond with this kind of uh, things, you know. Um, so uh, the question might come: Hey, what is high mark? So the high mark is the maximum number of VMs that were managed by Veeam and backup over the past week or seven days, basically. That's your your uh, high water mark. So you need to remember that. For example, um, the, the the reason is this: um, you know, the whole the Veeam exam is is geared towards um, you got to have a hands-on experience. You got to have a, have a knowledge because I think I mentioned it in the beginning of the uh, the recording on on, on um, 
part one, um, the backup, and you know uh, the replicas or the whole backup infrastructure is the you know like a lifeline and the last lifeline actually. So if something drastically happened, um, you know your 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 you have a water leak or you have a ransomware attack or you have a um, some disgruntled employee, you know, somehow your data is lost or compromised. Um, you have to have a good um, uh, the backup. If you don't have a backup, you're done. I'm honestly, I have seen the small companies going out of business uh, because of the ransomware attack. Trust me, they're gone totally. Like 10, 15 users didn't want to pay much money for, uh, didn't want to pay much attention and money for backup. Uh, their servers got uh, infected with ransomware over the weekend, and by the time because ransomware is not like it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna affect your entire server in like one hour. No, what ransomware does it somehow start encrypting it depending upon your data. Encryption sometimes takes one day, two days, three days, almost a week, you know. And by the time you notice, it, it, it depends how much damage is done. So for small companies, uh, it somehow it happened on, on Friday evening or somebody tried to log in from the, from the laptop remotely uh, and then infected it and you know, infection spread. So by, by, by Monday, hey, your files are encrypted. Now you pay. And, and the funny thing is people don't understand, even if you pay, your files will not be unencrypted you know, right away. It's going to take almost the same amount of time it took to encrypt the file. So, uh, you know, it's going to take some time to decrypt those files. So your data is not available even if you pay. And, and if you're lucky, if you pay and you get the uh, decryption key. Uh, anyway, um, we don't want to sidetrack. So basically what we are trying to say is, is, is a, a, you know, the backup. Um, for a um, so basically what we're saying is just to um, you know keep your license up to date keep your infrastructure up to date and a, this was a basically automatic usage licensing how, how do you obtain a license um, uh, the trial license, we already know how, how I got the license, you know, you download the software, they will email it to you uh, for the trial license uh, and the perpetual license, permanent full license for 10 years. Uh, we already went through this thing. Why this thing is coming back in? <laughs> Oops, somehow we went all the way up. Obtaining license, uh, that was, the, okay, this, this obtaining license, so, okay, here you go. And we are browsing and it's kind of as same thing trial license license key and it's you know it's not that difficult uh, installing license um, so this is the they normally tell you how to how to do it you know how to install the license which is when you're installing it you can browse it basically you know this this piece of cake and write this thing you know, we went so with this thing on uh, right here. The option, you know, update license key automatically. Um, what we talk about right here is if you don't know where to go, you're gonna spend like you know several hours. Of, not, I mean, not several hours, but a considerable uh, time looking for those options. Uh, you know, normally people will go and you know look around all these options. Actually, here that option is here, just like a Word or Excel, all the way go up. Uh, go to licenses, and right here you can install license. You click on it. Um, you know, uh, do you want to install the license file using Enterprise Manager instead? Because you can install from uh, using a you know um, Enterprise Manager too. I'm gonna say no. I'm, if, if I'm you know, doing it, I, I, I have to go browse it. Uh, the license I downloaded, um, that's the one. It's not going to do anything. We are, I already installed it. And you say update now, it's not going to let you update because uh, the backup license is managed by Enterprise, en en enterprise Manager. So here, see, 
so basically, if you are managing uh, or you have installed your um, enterprise manager, then you have to go through the enterprise manager. Uh, if I click here, it's going to fail again, the same thing. Uh, you remember that before we were getting the error message because of your ID is not, um, you know, it defined because it's just a trial license. So basically, once you install uh, Enterprise Manager, uh, your license is managed. Actually, you install Enterprise Manager and you add your, uh, you know, Veeam and Backup, uh, Veeam, um, Veeam Backup and Replication Server into it, then you have to um, manage from there. Close this thing. Um, uh, let's see here. Veeam backup replication. Uh, okay, now we the the, uh, the licensing part is done, and uh, this is the same thing. The deployment backup infrastructure we went through with all these things. Uh, what time is it? 55 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually uh, 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 end this video. And again, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And, and if you like it, please subscribe it. And I, I think I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time.